Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, in continuation with your main topic, that is quadratic equation. We are going to take the last aspect of it, and in this very lesson, you learn how to make uh, inferences from the quadratic graph. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, you'll be able to make inferences that you'll be able to extract answers or answers questions from the graph of the quadratic. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual, my dear student, in your favorite segment of the lesson today, I'm happy to give you the largest prime number gap that you can have among prime numbers that are less than 1 million. I'll tell you which gap is the highest or is the maximum gap you can have between any two consecutive primes. This will not be done after completing my lesson today, so don't go in. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let us just have one concrete example that we start with. This example one says that the graph below is for the relation y equals to 2x squared minus 7x minus 9. This is the graph displayed here, assuming that this graph is at a given equation. Who you are asked initially to draw this very graph after drawing it, then these questions follow. So let's learn how to answer these questions. If this very graph that is displayed is for this relation y equals to 2x squared minus 7x minus 9. The first question it says roots of the equation 2x squared minus 7x minus 26 equals to 0. Question Roman 2 says the coordinate of the minimum point of y. And the question Roman 3 says the range of values for which this equation 2x squared minus 7x minus 9 is less than 0. So let me just attempt to answer these questions all from the graph. Solution to this very problem, starting with the very first question, roots of the equation 2x squared minus 7x minus 26 equals to 0. What I'll ask you to do is to check this equation that we asked to find it is roots and the one that is displayed it is graph here that they have two terms in common 2x squared 2x squared by the 7x minus 7x these two terms are the same the only differ here is minus 9 while here is minus 26 so let me just copy this very quadratic the one asked to find it is roots equation so what we are going to do is to try to modify this very quadratic given Instead of this minus 26, try to modify it to become the minus 9. Because originally what you have, uh, the quadratic graph that you have, it is graph here is minus 9. So try to readjust this minus 26 so that it now equals to minus 9. So to make minus 26 minus 9, I'm going to add the number. So the number that I'm going to add will now be positive 17. You now add the 17 to minus 26. In the end, it will now be minus 9. But after adding 20, 17 by the left, you must add that same 17 to the right-hand side of the equation. So after adding minus 26 plus 17, you now have 2x squared minus 7x minus 9 equals to 17. So you can see your left-hand side is exactly the quadratic that you have. It is graph displayed. So what you now do, look at the number you have by the right. It is 17. Locate that 17 on the y-axis. This is my y-axis. So if this is 16, this is 20, this middle will now be my 18. And the halfway in between 18 and the 16 will now be my 17. Middle of this box is my 17. So what I'm going to do is to use my long ruler to draw a line to cross that y-axis at that number 17. And that line will now be parallel to the x-axis. When that line touches my curve, look at the line. I will now draw another one down with my ruler. Draw another one down with my ruler. The estimated value here on the x-axis will now be the solution to this very quadratic. If this is 5, this is 6, uh, this place is now going to be around uh, 5.7. Similarly, if this is minus 2, this is minus 3. This is now going to be around minus 2.3. Let me just write the roots there. So the roots will now be x minus 2.3. That is this value here. And x equals to 5.7, the value here. This will now be the roots of this equation that is related to the one drawn. Let me just move question Roman 2. Roman 2, we have to find the coordinate of the minimum point. The minimum point is this very point where your curve turns up. 
So what will be x is 2. What will be y here is now going to be halfway in between this 14 and 16. This is now minus 15. So this is the coordinate of the minimum point. x is now 2 and y is now minus 15. So I'll move to question Roman 3. It says range of values for x for which this 2x squared by 7x minus 9 is less than 0. Look at it. This is exactly the quadratic that we have drawn. From which value of x to which value of x, the corresponding value of y is now negative, that is less than 0. You can see from x equals to this 1 to x equals to this 4.5, uh, the corresponding value there is now negative. So there you now write uh, this from this x equals to minus 1 uh, to x equals to this 4.5, the corresponding value of y is now going to be a negative. So I answered this very question number one, that is example one. Let me just move to the next example. So example number two it says the graph below is for the curve y equals to 2x squared minus x minus 2. This is the curve in red. And you have another line y equals to 2x plus 3. This is the line in blue. The question asked here is from the graph find the roots of the equation 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So solution to this very problem, copying the given quadratic x to find it is roots 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. I always compare this uh, with the already the graphs I have the drawn. They differ here in the letter the term. They also differ here. So what I think of doing always is to modify this uh, so that it, my left hand side of it exactly resemble the one that I have it is graph. So in attempt to modify this so that it looks like uh, 2x squared minus x minus 2 by the left, what I'm going to do, I have to readjust this minus 3 to becomes minus x and minus 5 to becomes minus 2. So you now add appropriate uh, terms. So in doing that, I'm going to add uh, 2x. I'm going to add 3 to the left hand side. That makes me to add the same terms in the right hand side to x and this 3. So collecting this like terms is now going to give me 2x squared minus x minus 2. That is this minus 3x plus this 2 that I have introduced gives me this minus x. Minus 5 plus this 3 that I have introduced gives me this minus 2. So I have my 2x plus 3 what I have added by the right hand side. So you see this your left hand side is exactly the quadratic which I have it is curved here in red. And looking at the right hand side, 2x plus 3 is exactly the straight line that you have also in blue. Look at it. So, what we now do is to now find the, the point of intersection of the two that is, the curve and the line where they intersect the value of x that will give you the roots. So, x is the root is now be the point here and the point here. So, let me just find what will be the point here. The point here is now going to be x minus 1. And the point is now going to be x 2.5. So that will now be my roots. So root is now going to be minus 1. Oh, this second point, uh, when you go down, x is now going to be 2.5. Let me write it. So this is how we answer this very question. Let's just move to the next example. Example number 3 says the graph below is for the curve y equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And uh, you have another line drawn also, and that line is y equals to 2 minus 2x. So the question asked here is deduce the simultaneous solution of uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3, that is the quadratic, and uh, the linear. Solution to this very problem. Answering this very question is simple. Just find the point of intersection of the curve and the line. This point and this point. The simultaneous solution would now be the value of x and y at each point of intersection. So let me do that. So the simultaneous solution would now be, I'll take this point, what will be x, what will be y? And the second point, what will be x, what will now be y? So starting with this very first one, if I go down here, x is now going to be, x is now going to be, look at it, x here and y here, what will now be the values there? So if I go down, it's now going to give me x minus 2.2. And the y here is now going to be 6.4. So x equals to minus 2.2 and y equals to 6.4. Oh, 
I will move to the second point, the second point of intersection. What will be x there? What will be y there? Let me just uh, draw lines, look at it. What will be x at this very point? And what will be y at this very point? So x at this very point, according to my estimate, is now going to be 2.3. And y at that very point is now going to be minus 2.24. So this is how we now find the simultaneous solution. You have to consider both x and y. If it were just a solution, you now consider only x values at the point of intersection. So let's just take one more example. Example number four it says the graph below is for the curve y equals to six plus x minus x square. We are to use the decimary graph to determine the gradient of the curve. This is the curve for this quadratic equation. So we are to find the gradient of this curve at x equals to 2. So solution to this very problem. What you now do, just write the formula for gradient. Gradient, it says, is changing y over changing x as usual in every pedix or whatever practical. This is the meaning of gradient. So what we now do to find this change in x over change in y, we need to have we need to have a tangent there. We now have two points on that very tangent. It is those two points that we are now going to use to find the difference in their y value and their difference in the x value. So we are drawing the tangent at x equals to two because we are asked to find the gradient at x equals to two. So I'll now locate my x to two. This is my x to two on my curve. It is this point that is x equals to two. So I'm going to draw a tangent at this very point. Remember, a tangent is a straight line touching your curve at one point. So I'm going to draw the tangent at this very point. So use your longer ruler, please. Straight line. Let me just have it like this. So on this line, you now mark any two points that you can read their coordinates exactly. You use them to find the, the coordinates of y. The difference is what gives you this change in y. The x coordinate, their difference in the two points is what gives you this change in x. So let me just mark the two points. If I take this, x is 1, y is 7. I can read it exactly. x is 1, y is 7. Let me pick another one. This is x is 3, y is 1. So I'm going to use the this coordinates. That is 7, the value of y, and the value of y here, 1, to get this change in y. Let me just do that. So I'm going to have 7 minus 1. That is this value of y at this point minus this value of y at this point. That gives me my numerator change in y. Over change in x, the x value here is 1, and the x value here is 3. So I'm going to subtract. So 7 minus 1 gives you 6, and 1 minus 3 gives you minus 2. So you are going to have the gradient equals to minus 3. That is dividing 6 by minus 2 gives you minus 3. This is the gradient of this very line. And these are just the samples of questions that you can be asked to find from the graph of quadratic and linear. This is the end of this very lesson. Today I hope you enjoy it, and let me just move quickly to the last segment where I promise to give you the largest prime number gap between any two consecutive prime numbers that are less than 1 million. So it says 114 is the largest prime number gap. That is the largest gap between any two consecutive prime numbers that are less than 1 million. This is the largest gap that you can ever have. Let me just explain where this gap exists between which two prime numbers. So it says the gap is found between this prime number 492,113. This is a prime number. And the next prime number after this is 492,227. And if you now subtract the smaller from the larger, it will give you this gap exactly 114. This is the largest gap you can have between any two consecutive prime numbers that are below 1 million. We see more of these things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.